I'll show you how to get rid of the spirits. Wow. That we came for this. We came I've come for this. to you. We've I'll show you how to get rid of the spirits. Thank you. Thank you, Prophet. We came for this. This is what we need. Do you, do you, do you want me to share? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I should oh, share yes. with I, I'll, I'll oh. go to Ghana and preach that message. No, 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 no. We need this one. We need this one. Okay. No, sit down. I'll show you. Wow. Thank you, thank you. What a word. What a preacher. Now, but before I show you how to get rid of the demons that you have, Taken. You see, it's, it's, don't, don't worry about Jesus forgiving. No, that, that part, I, 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 because you see, that's Jesus. Mm. God is like really, like really, really, really loving differently from the way we are. Yeah. You see, the reason why we struggle to forgive people is because we are not sure whether they are really sorry. Yeah. And we are not sure. It's true. Oh, yeah. Listen, we are not sure whether they are really sorry, number one. And we are not sure whether they will do it again. Uh -huh. But this, this, is, this, is the, this is the foundation wow. of unforgiveness. Wow. It's, we are not sure whether they are sorry. We and we are not sure it. whether they will do it again. These two things. Oh. But, but I'm explaining to you why God is able to forgive so much. Mm. It's because, number one, he knows whether you are really sorry. Mm. And number two, he knows whether you will do it again. Mm. So when he says, I'm forgiving you and go and sin no more, he is the one who really knows that, oh, you are really sorry because wow. he can see straight into your heart. Wow. And he is the one who knows that you won't do it again because he knows the future and he knows everything. So God really, I mean, forgiving with God is like, it's like something quite, not so difficult for God. But in our case, you look at the person and, and, and the person is saying sorry and you know that this sorry is not it. a genuine sorry. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Shh. You see, for instance, when somebody is married to someone who is unfaithful, you see, if you check on the internet as to how those marriages carry on, you find two groups, but largely people are not able to overcome it. Wow. Uh -huh. People are not able to overcome it. I mean, you may marry somebody who slept with a hundred people. But then when the person is married to you and goes to do something with someone else, mm. they, they, it affects their mind. Wow. Uh -huh. And the main thing is whether the person is really sorry mm. and whether the person is really sorry and has turned and whether the person will do it again or is just saying something so that things move on. Yeah. Yes. So even though you are comfortable with the fact that the person does this, has done this with so many people before coming to you, as to whether the person is really sorry mm. and as to whether the person has really turned away from that, that's what we are not sure of wow. as human beings. You can wow. never be sure. Wow. And that's, that's the issue. That's the problem. So God, as for God, his forgiving is cool with him. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now the issue is the spirits okay. that came to you, okay. you see, which are such that they want to be with you. Wow. Now, if you've watched the movie Snakes in the Plane, Snakes yeah. on a Plane, it's a, 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 an unfortunate movie, but you see <laughs> the snakes biting the people and staying on them, yeah. which, is, which is something, when I watched, I, I mean, I just watched it, but I didn't like it, so I didn't finish watching the movie. But what I did was I went to check, shh, I went to check on the internet whether snakes do that. And I found out that there are many snakes that do that. They bite and hold you. They bite and they hold you. You see? Yes. 
So if such a thing, some bite like this, they, like they give you an injection and they go away, but others bite and hold on wow. and stay on. Wow. And so there are things that have hit you okay. and stayed with you. Okay. Oh. You see? And that's, that's, but as for Jesus forgiving you, oh, he's forgiving you, he's pardoning you. So, oh, you are sorry, yes, I know you are, you are sorry. I forgive you. But the thing which has stayed with you, or if in the realm of the spirit it's a boa constrictor or a python spirit. Mercy. Mercy. That one or an anaconda oh. is, it is, it is, hug, it is, it is hugging you for life. Oh. It's a, until death has do part. Oh. We can't breathe. Hey. Until death has do part. Oh. It wants to stay with you and hug you and hold you. Until it's over. Mercy. So now, I'm going to show you how show us, show us. to get rid of we these things. For this. We came for this. We came for this. Preach. I, I, I hope Preach I hope that I don't have to wait to share this at the bishop's school. Okay, sit down. It's, our message. it's for us. Preach to us. Now. The way to get rid of the things that make you some way and make you unholy and make, because they stay with you to continue to inject that poison into you. Mm. Yes. You see, like if you've had a relationship with a boy or a girl and you've been really had a bad experience, Mm. all boys, look, all boys look, they just remind you of pain. All boys remind you of pain. It's true. It's a scar. It's a I think scar. I will share this with other people. You're helping us. You're helping us. You're helping us. I think I'll share this with other people. Okay. When you are you have a, a bad experience, what what happens is the change in your mind. And remember, I was sharing with you that in the realm of the spirit, the mind and the soul is the interface between the realm of the spirit and the realm of this world, the flesh world. So what comes into your mind is the communication from the realm of the spirit. So now your mind changes because a new communication has come into your mind. And your mind is unsettled. You see a boy and your mind is unsettled. At first, at first when you used to see a boy, your mind flows happily. Nice, 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 nice. Or when you used to see a girl, your mind flows nice, 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 nice. But now, because of what has happened, in the realm of the spirit, the thing in your mind, in your mind is question, 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 question. question. You are confused. And it's because of the attack that you have experienced. Wow. You are helping yes. us. You are helping us. You are helping us. Are you listening to me? You, you need to go back to your seat so that I can tell you how to get rid of these okay. evil spirits. Okay, okay, okay. I, I want to show you how to expunge them. But before, wait, before I share with you, I want you to 
put down, okay, how many evil spirits do you think you have? You see, what listen, a list. What a list. listen, I want to tell you something, what I call the happiest demon. Okay, okay. Do you know what is the happiest demon? No, 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 no. The, the happiest demon, the happiest demon in the world. It's like if there are demons, there are happy ones and they are not, they are worried demons. There are demons that are worried and anxious okay. Okay. and there are happy demons. Okay. The happy, how many want to know what is the happiest yeah. demon? Maybe these things are too deep. It's too deep for you. <laughs> Maybe this, this type of revelations are too deep. I should share it uh, at another. Uh, okay. The happiest demon, the happiest demon is the demon that the people that he afflicts think that he's not there. Yeah. They think that he's not there. Oh, wow. And he's so happy that their minds never come to him. So he's very free. He moves around and they everything is blamed on something wow. else except the one who is causing the wow. problem. Yes. Wow. We didn't know. Before September 11th, there were terrorists in this country. Mm. And the country was oblivious, wow. officially, wow. of the presence of such things. Wow. So they flourished and they were so happy. No one will ever think, when you are going to learn how to fly a plane, that there could be any reason for learning how to fly wow. a plane. They were so happy that such thoughts never came to anybody. Wow. Yeah. But now, mm. those thoughts come to yeah. people. You come and say, why are you? What are you doing? Mercy. You can't just learn how to fly a plane. Mercy. Why do you want to just... And the person says, I don't want to learn how to fly. I just want to know how to land. I, I, I just, I don't know, need to how to take off and to land. I just want to know how to control it when it's in the air. So the happiest terrorists and the happiest demons are those who people are completely unaware of wow. that they exist. Wow. So now, it takes honesty. And somebody says, oh, but I have the Holy Spirit, but I've told you that in the realm of the Spirit, there's a lot of space. Like there's a large space. Yes. To have as many as 6,000 demons in just one person. And it seems that a human being has a great capacity for a large number of devils. Oh, we are learning. We are learning. You are helping us. You are helping yes. us. Wow. So now I need you to take your phone mm. or your pen and write down what a list. any list of devils. And that's going to make them unhappy. And as you are writing, the demons in your life are going to be... Don't write this one. 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 Because as soon as you write it, his end has come. His end has come. His end has come. Amen. Yes. His end has come. Yes. Go and sit down and write. Wow. Wow. We came for this. I need you to write. Then I'm going to show you how to get rid of them. Uh, 
And I know that most people are going to say, well, maybe, maybe this, maybe that. But when you can diagnose, you see, in mental illness, when you have what we call insight, mm. you can see that you've got a problem. Wow. That means that your problem is not so serious. Wow. The really mad patients, mm. the main, the difference between those who really have a problem and those who have a problem but not so serious is that those whose problem is not so serious can see that they have a problem. Oh. So they would even talk to the doctor and say, you know, I have this problem and I have these thoughts, I have these voices, I have this, I have it, and I think I have schizophrenia. Wow. Rarely will a patient say that. If he says that I think I have that, then his problem is not serious. Not, not that serious. But what a person doesn't know, and the person is arguing with him, I don't have a problem. I remember one lady, one lady was standing with me on stage. She said to me, a bird flew into my head through my ear and entered, and the bird is in my head. I said, I should she said, I am telling you. She told me, I am a nurse. I know what I'm saying. The bird flew through my ear and entered into my head, and it is flying there now as I'm speaking to you. No, this is serious. So she doesn't have insight. She doesn't know that she has a problem. So that's why if you can even write down the demons or the spirits that you can see that I've been afflicted by this, by this. Even sometimes you are afflicted by spirit of divorce by being in your parents' home and watching them divorce and even watching your father treat your mother in a certain way. You'd be surprised the spirit of fear has come upon you or seeing marriages break up. If you fear marriage, or watching certain movies, certain spirits have come wow. into you, and you don't even know how much you are affected are by us. all these different you things. You're helping us. Yes. You're helping things us. that you watch, things that you've seen, things that you've heard of, each one in fear, and your heart starts to beat, and you wow. just get, you, you are just changed. Wow. All those things, they are wow. all spirits. Because spirits bring thoughts, wow. casting down imaginations. Wow. The weapons of our warfare. Are not carnal, but mighty for cast the main work of weapon of weapons that God gives us is to cast thoughts wow. down. I mean, can you imagine all the big weapons God gives us are against thoughts? Wow. Wow. Then thoughts must be thoughts must be the most highly demonic and satanic action against you. It will bring certain way, certain thought types of thinking. Go deeper. Yes. Go deeper. Go and deeper. that is why that's why people write things, say things, say stories bring up things. They're trying to bring thoughts and questions. Wow. This is Satan's original work, wow. has God said. He's always questioning a good thing. Questioning what God is doing. Has God said? Did God say this? Did God say this? Did God say this? Did God say this? Say this? Until you question everything. Wow. Wow. You're Are you listening? Us. You're helping us. You're helping us. You're helping us. How many demons? How many have got hundred? Have you written hundred? <laughs> okay, right, right. I'll, I'll give me a chair. I'll, I'll, I'll sit here and wait. I'll come and sit. I'm coming to sit down. Uh, Kezia, come and sing for us. Up 
better it's better so just leave it don't tamper with it amen what are these things that move here what are they why are they moving is it a is it a design it moves but it just moves like that <laughs> i don't see any light you see light maybe i'm not seeing the light no i thought maybe it's a new thing that you have just some guys moving on the stage like that So why are they moving? They just want to use electricity or what? Who is the apostle to the light? I don't see I don't see his commitment. Hmm. Okay, now how many demons did you get? No, just give the numbers. I want to hear numbers. 12. 
nine. Sixteen. 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 No, so if you have sixteen, you, you are even identifying sixteen things. How much more something that is identifying six thousand? Wow. Wow. Huh? Imagine that. Wow. Six thousand. So you can imagine that the more demons flood the system, the more dangerous it is. Now, one of the other things is that Jesus said to the demons in the madman, what is your name? Because if I say, come, Mm. come now, Mm. do you see? Everybody's still looking. But if I call your name, and what's your name? You. Deji. If I say, Deji, come. You see, it has, it, has, it has given a response. Deji, come. Come, here. It has given a response. But if I just say, come, all, all the demons will be looking, it's not us. It's not me. That is why it's important to name them. Wow. You're helping us. You're helping yes. us. Yes. So if you call something by its name, it responds. But once you just say, general, That's why sometimes God will give you in the realm of the spirit a picture of what it is or a name. And then you deal with it. And that's why you see, don't be afraid of big diagnosis. Don't be afraid of the word depression. Don't be afraid of the word suicide. Don't be afraid of the word hatred or wickedness. Those things, Mm -hmm. lust, I mean fornication, adultery, murder, all those things. Don't be afraid of those words thinking that if I don't say them, if I say it, it become real. No, 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 no. Rather, when you say it, you pinpoint it, divorce. Divorce. You have to mention that this thing is after me. I will say it. Yes. Unhappy marriage is after me. I will say it. Contention. Yes. Yes. So as you mention the things, mm. are you with me? Yes. Ah, uh, the power. So the power. The power is there. Go. Amen. You see, DJ, go, go, and you see immediately there is a response. Wow. Yes. So it's wow. imp- so important for you to know names wow. of spirits, You're helping us. and then you start to mention them. So now, I'm going to give you something very, that is going to help you even more. Because you were writing 16, 18, 20, and you couldn't even know what you, how many do you have? 24. I want you to take the top three. Top three out of this list of something that is following you. Kenneth Hagin had a vision of his son, uh, his son-in-law. He saw him in the realm of the spirit with three dogs following him. And I always remember that vision. It's like there were three things following him around his life. He was never able to keep a job. He was not able to prosper. He was not able to be controlled. I mean, I think maritally, I don't know what kind of problem, but it, like he saw it in the realm of the spirit that those three things wow. had been following him around. Wow. Bible says outside are dogs. Wow. There are evil spirits that are dogs wow. in the realm of the spirit. Wow. So take top three. Me, I've, I've prayed over top three devils that I felt following me. I could feel them following me all the time. I could feel them following me. And as a pastor, as a bishop, as a founder of a church, as an evangelist, I could sense that these three devils are following me. The big ones. Yes. You are helping us, really. Lions. Hmm. They can follow a head of buffaloes. They'll just be looking at them. And the buffaloes, have you seen a real buffalo? Like the buffalo extends from like here yeah, to yeah. about here. Something like this. I mean, it's huge. And you see the lions looking at it. So no matter how big you are, demons are not... uh, They are patient. They are patient. They are patient. patient. Your size and your niceness is not an issue. They just look at you. With time. Take your top three, and then I'll tell you how to get rid of them. Are you? Have you got your top three? I'm ready. 
I, I hope I'm not talking to myself. It's our message. It's our message. Some of you, maybe you feel you have only angels. sit down and then I'll tell you how to get rid of these things. Wow. Now, the way, okay, to get rid of your top three, top five devils is called in the realm of the spirit, it's called crowding out. Crowding out. Crowding out. Now, the, the strategy of crowding out is revealed in Matthew 20, uh, Matthew 12, when Jesus spoke about an unclean spirit that has gone out. And walks through dry places, seeketh rest, findeth none. Verse 43. Then he said, I'll return to my house whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Decorated. Put in order. Wow. Amen. Amen. Now listen carefully. When there is a demon. For it to be okay to come, it must have space. Okay. Okay. Teach us. It must have space. Teach us. Yes. That's why the emptiness, the emptiness creates the space that I was talking about. And then swept makes it even more more space wow. prepared. I call it swept means prepared space, wow. and garnished means decorated. Wow. Hey. So the space it is prepared wow. and then decorated wow. appropriately for de- demons and devils. Now, when there are bad things on the internet mm. written, where, the way people, those, those who do that work, removing things, bad things, the way they remove bad things is to put good things. Wow. Okay. They, they crowd out the bad okay. things and fill the space spaces with good things wow. so that if you Google that thing, those good things can. That is, th- there are people. Wow. That is the work they do. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is that is the work they do. And the main way of removing the bad and the evil is to crowd out wow. with good things, okay. so that there's no space okay. for the bad things. So crowding out is used even in the re- in the realm of the natural, in the realm of the internet, and so on, to remove things. You remove the things by crowding out with good stories or good things. The bad things then move further and further away. You can turn pages of whatever, you never see it. You are teaching us. Is it true or is it not true? Yes. Yes. So, crowding out is the main way to get rid of evil spirit. Because Jesus himself said that. They come back and they look. The thing in the house is that there is space. There's space. My place is there and there's a lot of space. So you have to get rid of, by first of all, not having an empty house okay. and not having it prepared okay. or appropriate. Okay. Yes. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be ready. It shouldn't, there shouldn't be space at all. There should be no room at all. Yes. Now, what are the things that crowd out the devil? Let me ask, what crowds out thoughts? 
What, what crowds our thoughts? It's, it's other thoughts. And where do other thoughts come? Other thoughts come from preaching. You see, messages, preaching. It comes from music. It comes from books. It comes from the Bible. It comes from these things that are injected in. So the more that is injected in, the more the evil spirits are crowded out and the negative thoughts are crowded out of your life. It's true. Now, if I take my phone and I want to go to YouTube and listen to some message or watch something, right? That has crowded out the time to listen to uh, pornography. Because you still need time to watch. I don't know how long are these pornography films. How, How long are they? How long do they last? You don't know. I'll, I'll find some people who tell the truth and then I'll also preach to them. I'll find people who tell the truth and I'll preach to them. Any length. There are short ones. And there are long ones. Medium ones. Part one, part two, part two. series now the time that is needed for such things you get it you are gone on to YouTube listening to some other message by the time the demons come back they look into the realm of the spirit of your mind where at that up to 6,000 devils can be, and they find so much of the space is occupied. And then they look and they say, "Ah, it's not empty. It's not empty. There's something there. There's something there. We can't go there. There's no space. There's no space. There's no space. We can't go there. We can't go there. Yes, the memory is full. Memory full. No space for nonsense. No space for nonsense on your phone. I think those on this side, I don't, I don't know at the back there, I don't know what they want. I don't know why they are here. in the corner they don't appreciate they don't they don't have they don't understand this message crowd out crowd out demons i'm telling you don't worry so how can i know what a demon is simply remember demons thoughts demons just produce thoughts that's all demons produce thoughts that's all so when you say demons evil spirits is so if somebody is sitting there planning to kill you it's that the demon is in the person that is what he's thinking if he's planning to kill himself the demon is there so you can know a presence of a demon by the presence of a thought that's all a presence of a demon by the presence of a thought yes so when you see somebody and you're just having lustful thoughts lustful thought, I want to look on my phone I want to look at pornography Shh. I want to look at pornography. I want to do all those things. A spirit is at work in you. It's producing all those thoughts in you. And that's, that, that is actually one of the reasons why you feel so bad. Because you have listened to the devil. You see, listening to the devil and doing what the devil wants is what makes you sad. What, that, that sometimes the act itself is not so bad. But the fact that it was the devil who made you do it. That's what makes it bad. Because eating an apple... Eating a fruit is not a bad thing. But the fact that it was the devil who made you pluck the apple.
let me show you. Let me show you. You see, when Jesus met the devil in the wilderness, the things that the devil suggested Jesus to do, they were not bad things. He told him to fly. Why not fly? I mean, he can fly. Is that some, I will not be flying these days. You will not fly here. And there's nothing wrong with flying. But the fact that the devil is telling you to fly, I don't want to fly. I don't want to fly. I want you to overcome the devil from now. I want you to overcome the devil from now. Yes. He told him to turn the stones to bread. And personally, I don't see why what is wrong with turning stones into bread. And I eat the bread after. And they'll be turning all the stones into bread. Fresh bread. Fresh bread from the bakery. Early in the morning. I'll turn the stones in my house into bread. Why not? But if it is the devil who is suggesting that I should turn this stone into bread. I don't want to do it. I'm showing you so that this is the end of the devil in your life. When he comes on, hey, this, I know this. The devil took Jesus to the top of the mountain and showed him evangelism, the world. He said, I'll show you salvation in one minute. I'll give you the whole world. Which is why Jesus came to the world. I mean, the temptation was in line with Jesus' own vision. And even the salvation of the world, if it is to be done because the devil said so, then the, the, the world should be there without being saved. And Jesus said, no, I will not, I will not bow. Let the world be there. Let all the cities and the nations be in your hand. For me to bow my knee and do what you say. So, so you see that now at a point it depends on who says you should do it. Okay, okay. Yes. So from now, when the devil speaks, you recognize, ah. Oh. Look, one day I was with a guy, we were in London, we were walking in the underground. As we were walking together, we were quiet, we were walking together briskly. Then suddenly he shouted, Satan, shut up! So I, I, I turned around to see where, where was Satan. I realized that the devil has spoken to him as we were walking. I mean, he shouted, Satan, shut up! So I stop and I look at what is going on. Well, he, he, he was a spiritual man, so he knew that Satan has spoken to him. So from now, we are going to crowd out yeah. devils. And you know, sometimes you look at someone and realize that, oh, wow. Mm. One time I saw a brother, I said, what is your problem? He said, prostitutes. Yeah. Prostitutes. This is my problem. And now this, this, this brother is like, it's like I, I don't know whether he's a pastor or an elder or whatever, but you see, he has learned how to call for prostitutes. Yeah. So that, that's his problem. So his problem is not like maybe last after a sister in the church or lasting after somebody he saw in school or work. His problem is like to call prostitutes. Like that's what he has learned. He has learned to call prostitutes. Mercy. So, shh. No, listen. I'm telling you, there are spirits. There are different types of spirits. So I know another brother, one time he went to work somewhere. When he went, I mean, we are talking about a village. He asked the fellow people that were working with him, can you find, get, get, me, is that, get me a girl? I mean, in a rural setting. Yeah. And, and they, 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 they brought them. This person, and this is what you know. And I've met in recent time a number of brothers, pastors. So you like, you've become a pastor. God has forgiven you. God didn't have a problem in forgiving you. 
But the thing attached itself to you, and what you know is to call for women you don't know, who don't know their names, who don't know who they are. Yes. One brother told me, he said, look, sometimes the ladies that come, they are old that they can be like his mother. Yes. But that is what he knows. To go for prostitutes, you pay them this amount, this amount, this amount. That's what he grew up knowing. And so any town you go in, you see that that is what is occurring to you. That what, what, because like as we are here, there are places to call, I'm sure. You call and the people will be brought. Yes. I think this group doesn't understand this type of thing. (laughs) So, crowding out, crowding out is going to be the mainstay. And that crowding out is going to increase your chastity and your holiness. Let me tell you something. There are people who are in town. How many brothers will will say that it has not occurred to you to order a prostitute here? Since you came here. Raise your hand. I mean, since you came to this camp. It has not occurred to you. Raise your hand. To order a prostitute. Put down your hand. How many of you has it occurred to you to order a prostitute? How many of you has it occurred to you to look at pornography since you came here? I think I'll go and talk to honest people. I'll find I'll find honest people and preach to them. I'll find honest people. Before they come. Okay, how about just before they come? It occurred to you. Pornography occurred to you. Okay, how about just before they come? Did it occur to you to order a prostitute? Uh-huh. So you see, something that doesn't occur to you occurs to somebody else all the time, all the time, all the time, every day, every time, any opportunity, any new place he goes, it comes to his mind. But you, it doesn't come to your mind. It shows you that that spirit has not come to you and it's not in you. But the fact that, because to me too, before the camera, it's not occurred to me to look at pornography. And after the camera, it's not occurred to me because I, I don't have that problem. Because that thing is not with me. You understand? So certain things have not occurred to you because that spirit is not you. But for somebody else, he arrives at a place. What he knows is that other somebody, and they choose this, the thing, how to, to get a person. So whatever is keeps on occurring to you and coming back to you and coming to destroy you, I'm telling you, it's a power from hell. And today it is breaking in the name of Jesus. Amen. A man got married to a wife. And as he got married to the wife, the wife kept saying to him, thank you for marrying me. Thank you for marrying me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for choosing me. Oh, yes. Another man married a wife. (laughs) Oh, yes. And the wife kept on saying, what you are doing is not fair. You are not treating me well. You are not treating me right. And that was a constant message from her. And then we went on. You see, the, the spirit is always there. You are not treating me right. You are not, I am not a good person. You are not doing well. And she said, if I die, I said, I'm not feeling well. If I die, I want you to know I will not die alone. I will never die alone. No, you see, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. But now a small sickness, you are feeling a fit of COVID or something. You are saying that if I die, I will not die alone. Oh, yes. What is it? So you see the spirits are increasing. And that's why you see now the spirit of murder. Now, you know, then she went on and said that I will never let anybody benefit from you. Yes. I will never let anybody benefit from you. If I die, I will never die alone. No one will benefit from you. We are talking about young couples. Wow. 
And another person is saying, thank you for marrying me. Thank you for choosing me. Because you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, that, I mean, what is, what is this? Like, there's nothing bare here and somebody has chosen me. There's nothing bare here. <laughs> what are the thoughts that are coming to your mind all the time? Yes. Also, I don't need a man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need You don't need a man. You don't need a man. What, then what to the man who marries you when you keep on saying, I don't need a man? You don't need a man. You should rather, you should rather be saying, I need you. I need you. I need you. When you wake up in the morning, say, I need you. And, 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 you, should, and you should be saying, I am benefiting from you. I want you. Start saying it. I'm benefiting from you. I thank God for you. I really like you. I like the way you like me. We have a song like that, don't we? Sit down. Let's sing that song. I really like you.
be broken. The word of God has sold you. Help me to do what's right. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Help me to follow you. Jesus, please hold my hand. Help me to do what's right. Guide me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. Point number four in your apostolic ministry. We really like this message. Oh, yes. Now, so the thoughts that come to your mind is from the spirits. Yes. The spirit that has entered you that makes you feel that a man is this useless thing. The marriage is nonsense. You know, what do you need a man for? What's the use of this marriage? Open and close, open and close for nothing. You are monkey, they work, baboon, they chop. What is all this? These thoughts are demonic thoughts. And they have come to your mind because of certain things that you've been exposed to. Now, I want to say something else. Yes. I'll, show you, I'll show you a secret okay. that you must not forget Tell when us. it comes to evil spirits. You see, there is always something physical that you do that opens you up to evil spirits. Yes. There's always something physical that you do. Wow. Yes. Because spirits are affected by physical things. That's why Jesus said, I'm from above and you are from be- below. You are from beneath. I mean, there's above and there's beneath. In the realm of the spirit. There are real locations. There are change of locations. Yes. He said, you are from beneath. I am from above. There's change of location. So, there is something physical that you do that brings evil spirits. What does the Bible say? Ephesians 4. Give no place to the devil. No, don't give. That give no place. He was writing to physical people who were in the physical world, who could do something physically wow. that would give a place to a spirit. Wow. Wow. It's a revelation. Yes. He was writing to physical Ephesians. Physical Ephesians. Hmm. Who do you want? Who do you want? Who do you want? Who? Yeah. He was writing to physical Ephesians who were in a physical place called Ephesus. Who could do something that when he wrote to them and said, don't give a place. That meant that there was something they could do physically that would change something in the realm of the spirit and allow a devil to come in to a physical person. Yes. So there is always something physical that uh, you do. So that is why you notice you doubled in pornography. You doubled in drugs. Wow. You doubled in wow. 
perverted sex. You doubled in occultism. You doubled in witchcraft. You doubled with having sex with animals, with this, with that. Different things. Once you touch it, you see that you have done something physical that has opened a door and it's opening something to come to you or fighting fathers, attacking authorities, insulting your pastor and the church. You do something that is physical. So anytime you see someone who is troubled with evil spirits, he has done something physically that has made him open to the realm of the spirit and for the realm of the spirit to come flooding in. Yes. You are helping us. Yes. Helping and that's why Jesus said, that's why Jesus said, or that's what the Bible says, give no place. Yeah. And that's why Jesus said, when they came, they looked into the house. Yeah. Upstairs, there's space, there's space, there's space here. There's, oh, there's a lot of space. Charlie, guys, come. And then they come in. Yes. Lots of space, lots of space. I, when I sit down, you know, on Sunday, I met with some ashes. On Sunday, I have intimate counseling. So I, have, I was doing my intimate counseling. And I told all of us, all of you don't listen to messages. Oh. I could even see into the realm of the spirit on their faces that they are not people wow. who listen to messages. Wow. I could see it. Wow. You can tell. Mercy. So after I spoke for some time, I said, okay, is it true? Do you listen to messages? <laughs> we don't listen to messages. Yes. And they all admitted it. Yes. Because you can see people who have left their house empty. Garnished. Swept. Yes. And then in addition, if they go and play around with, do certain physical things, you see certain things come. One day, one day I told a brother, I said, what you are doing, a spirit of inability to marry will come unto you. Uh, I told him, I said, because every girl you sleep, you sleep with her. Every girl you see, you sleep with her. So you are used to sleeping with many, many girls. So one day when you take one person and say, I want to marry you, and you take one girl home with you, after five days of marriage, you'll be tired of her. You'll be tired of her. Say, well, I'm not used to one vagina. I need more. I need more vaginas. I think I'll say this to mature people. I'll say these things to mature people. <laughs> oh, yes. So, some of you guys, you may be thinking that, oh, you know, I've had so many girlfriends, I've had brown ones, I've had dark ones, I've had fair ones, I've had tall ones, I've had skinny ones, I've had fat ones, I have. But what you don't know, what you don't know is that you are opening each act, opens a door. The Bible says, give no place. He was talking to physical Ephesians in a physical place called Ephesus at a physical time. He was telling them that there is something that you do physically to open up things. It's to open up things. So each girl that you keep doing these things with is open up something. And that thing is an inability to stay with one person. Because it's also an ability. And there are some people who stay happily with one person. I'm happy to be with you. One, one pastor friend of mine, he said, I just need two things. I need my book, my Bible, and my wife. And I'm okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I just need my book, my Bible, and my wife. And I'm okay for life. I don't need anything in the world. But for you, <laughs> for you, you have learned, you have learned something. You, you can never just be happy, so this is my book, my Bible, and my wife. So, oh, your wife is, I mean, she's not, I mean, good enough. She's not good enough. Yeah. And you start saying to yourself, but I can't eat spaghetti every day. I think I'll stop. I'll stop.
You say you can't eat spaghetti every day. You can't eat spaghetti every day. So what are you going to do now? You are going to eat snakes. Snakes. Sit down. 